Welcome to episode 11 and in this episode we're going to be talking a little bit about floats and in short floats just kind of make a block level element act as if it was an inline element and it doesn't completely act like an inline element but it just kind of makes it so that they don't spread across the entire width of the page and so that other block level elements can go around them. So. In Safari right now, I have this very simple setup, and it's two paragraphs on a light gray background. And to do that, I just have a div that has two p tags in it. And the div has a width of 80%, so if I were to resize this, you can see that it just keeps a little bit of margin on the left and right hand sides. And then it also has a background color and a bit of padding. And we use this little line of code to center it. That's pretty much it. So what I want to do here is I want to make it so that the paragraphs are right next to each other. This way, you know, it's kind of easier to read and I like columns. So if just say you wanted to do that. How do you do that? Well, right here I have in my div p. The only attribute I have set here is margin top is zero. And let's just say we added another attribute width equals, let's say, 50%. Now, normally you would think that they would go right next to each other, but because they are block elements, they will not. And they will always stay like their own exact row. They won't actually merge together. To make them merge, we have to give them another attribute called float left. Now one thing that's important to note when using floats is padding and margins on other elements can kind of get in the way. So if these two paragraphs don't exactly meet, you can just make the width a little bit shorter until it gets there. Now we refresh in Safari and we see that it kind of worked. So these two paragraphs are right next to each other and there's two columns like I wanted. The only problem here is that now the div isn't the full height of the exact content. And the reason that is is because the div is almost like ignoring our paragraphs now because they're just floating there. They're kind of just interrupting content. So the div doesn't realize that that is what our actual content is. To solve this problem, we need to actually insert another element. So I'm going to go back into my HTML and right before the closing tag of the div right here, I'm going to add div and I'll give it a class of uh, clear. And now if we go into CSS, we can type dot clear and give it an attribute of clear both. And what this does is it just kind of refreshes and uh, it makes it jump down after the floats. And you can see that we still have a little bit of room here. And the reason why that is, and I'll show you that, is because I have in CSS, my div is set to padding 20 pixels. So automatically, the, um, the clear div also has that attribute. So what we can do now is, well, there's two things we can do. We could either give this one a class, this original div a class, and just apply it here, or we can just rule out all those settings. So I'll just go into my doc clear and say padding is zero. And that gets rid of the padding. The only gap that's left here is from the margin bottom of the paragraphs. And so that's pretty much how it works. When you use the float, they just kind of go right next to each other. So I'll show you a, a more real world example. Most of the time if you're creating, uh, let's say a navigation area, you're typically going to actually use a list. And the reason why you use a list is because it, that's essentially what it is. It's a list of menu items. So a lot of people start out with an unordered list. And then they just have a few links in here. So I'll say uh, home. Uh, about and products like that 
Now, since each li is a block level element, you'll see that they're all on their own row. And that's not what we want to do. So in order to solve this, we can just apply on our li that float left. And now they are right next to each other. To get rid of this annoying bullet point that's now here, we're going to use a new attribute that you haven't seen yet, which is list list dash style dash type. And this is where you can actually set the border type that you want. And there's a, a whole bunch of them. So if I wanted a square border, I can just enter in square and we'll get a square one. But for this example, I want none. And now you can see we have none. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is they're really bunched up together. So to get rid of that, we're actually going to add a margin. So we can say margin right and maybe 20 pixels. And now if we go ahead, you'll see that they're more separated. And that's easily how you can transform a list into a navigation like element. And if you want to actually make these clickable, of course, you can just take an A tag and put it around that LI, like so. So it really is pretty easy to use. So that's pretty much it for floats. Uh, they are kind of funky, so you do have to kind of play around with them to see what you want to use and what you want to get. And uh, but after a while, they're just like second nature. It's really easy to, to just implement on your website. And uh, one of the best examples is I'll show you another one uh, for layouts. And we'll definitely be using this in the future. But let's just say you wanted you wanted a main area and then you want a, a sidebar. So the first thing we can do is we can use a div for the main area. And I'm going to grab some content just plug it right in and for the sidebar I'm going to use a nifty little element called the side and I'll grab some more content plug that in and just so that you can see it easily I'll give the div a background color of uh, DDD and the aside will get a background color of uh, Let's see, C, F, C. I don't really know what color that is, but we'll see. Okay, it's a light green, perfect. So now you can see we have the two elements that are right on top of each other. So if we wanted to make them side by side, well, let's do this. Let's give the div a width of 600 pixels maybe, and the side can have a width of 300 pixels. And now we get the right widths, and now we can give them both a float left. And now they both fit together. And of course, if you wanted to center these, you wrap them in a div and set that to margin zero auto, which we have done before in episode 7.5. So that's the same thing here, only we have two side by side divs. There also is a float right, which you can use, but it's much less common. Float right will allow it to go to the right side of the page rather than the left side of the page, as we just saw with the navigation elements. Um, the only downside to this is that it will actually mix up the order. It'll actually reverse it. So in here, when it's float left, we have the div and then the aside. If we set them both to right, we'll have the aside and then the div, like so. However, you could see that now it's aligned to the right side of my page rather than the left side. So that's pretty much it. Again, just play around with these and just get your desired effect. It's not too difficult, but you just have to really get hands on and really see the effects of all these different commands.